Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by author and CEO, Anthony Gonzalez, and we are going to be talking about his story and how he went from incarceration to success. 2007, Anthony received fair time on a conspiracy charge. He started writing while in prison so his son would know about his father. Anthony has since turned his life around and he is now the CEO of a company and he has invested in real estate. So we're going to be talking to him about his life, how he got everything turned around, his books and what he is now currently doing to help others. Anthony, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. Why don't you start off by just giving everybody a little bit of a background about yourself? I'm 48, so I'm definitely a 70s baby. Been through most of the things that the average person has been through. Sometimes I think a little more, but that's for the book to decide. Parents use drugs, welfare. Poor. I mean, the list goes on for the average uh, black male in New York City, at least at that time. That's how it appeared to me as a kid. So turned to the life of crime, nonviolent, more of a drug dealer type lifestyle. When I caught that Fed bit, it was just there was a moment when uh you know how there's always a a moment where somebody realized this is the end. So when I was to that moment, when I was feeling the to like I'm done with the life of crime, I'm done with selling drugs. That's when the Fed swooped in. And then at that time, now the only thing, the reason for me wanting to be done was my son trying to really be a dad, trying to really do better be a better person so he could see someone better. So when I got arrested by the feds, it was just like, I never got to tell him who I was. And when I thought about the person I was, I was like, dad, he ain't even gonna know his dad. So it got me to writing. And this is the first uh, manuscript that I wrote that I'm about to put out. And it's just like, it's been altered a little bit. So now it's like, more of a me not just talking to my son, but me just expressing stuff to people who don't think that you can do it from a hard upbringing. It's just to let people know that even coming from prison with all the things that stacked against you, the felons, hard to get a job, everybody's judging you. I mean, with fair reason to be judged with all the wild stuff that goes on, but all the uphill battles, like there's a way to come out on top and not change and lose yourself. So talk about that fair charge. What was it for and how much time did you actually spend in the feds and what was that like? being in federal prison. The charge was a conspiracy to distribute five kilograms of cocaine. I mean, crack cocaine, which there was like, it was more like a, a a drug sweep. And then just because everybody's in the same area, general area, you could just say that this is a big conspiracy. So it was that easy. It was not really a conspiracy. It wasn't like none of the movies where everybody's like, there's a a capo and an underboss. It wasn't nothing like that. 
It was like going into a neighborhood where it's like a whole bunch of drug dealers. And because you're the federal government, you could just snatch them all up and just find a way to, even if it's a conversation with somebody and just say, y'all all know each other. Y'all all conspired to sell all these drugs. So it was a charge like that. I had a criminal history already. So my mandatory minimum was like 20. I copped out to 10 and I uh, took a plea deal for 10. And then that, for some reason, when I finally got to the halfway house, that Obama law about changing the ratio of drugs, crack cocaine to coke, to regular coke kicked in. And they, I wound up getting out probably, I probably ended up just like doing seven overall with the probation. I mean, with the halfway house in prison, it was like six and a half. And prison, it was just, I'm from the street, so I know the rules. There's mad unwritten rules that people just, if you know, you know. And if you maintain yourself and carry yourself as a man, respectable, stand on some morals and don't, then you don't really have too much trouble in prison. Like there's mad misleading things that they promote. One thing they don't promote is how they don't try to help you when you're in prison. So like educate you, rehabilitate you. But other than that, it's not as hard. I mean, only the strong survive. So that's when you find out who be talking and who actually can live amongst a pack of wolves. It's basically, that's, a, that's how it is in there. So that's all it was. I don't really like to talk too much about it because it's not nothing to glorify. So you probably won't hear nothing good. None of my good stories of prison because they all bad. <laughs> so you say you took a plea deal for 10. What did that plea deal involve and what did you have to do to get that plea deal? Or what did they say that you needed to do to get that plea deal? I didn't have to do nothing because I was probably one of the last three that decided to even take whatever offer they was offering. It wasn't nothing. I didn't, we, it really was a drug sweep. I didn't know more than half of the people that was in the case. There was nothing to even talk about. I, all I wanted to do was something that I didn't do. And it would have been like, bring bodily harm to the one person that even got me involved in that. But I didn't have to do nothing. There was nothing to do. Everybody already took, I was 36 of us. By the time I, I took my deal, my exact words to my PO was, my man is going to trial and I'm rolling with him. And I mean, to my lawyer and my lawyer said, who are you talking about? And when I said who my man was, he was just like, your man is not going to trial. So whatever was on the table, I just took it. There was no more fighting. I realized everybody just took what they took. Let's talk about your book when you were in prison. I know you wanted to write it because of your son, but what? tell us about the book and what was in it. And I know you said you kind of changed it up. How did it start off to what it is now? From what it is now is more talking to men of color, men who struggle, men of all color. Like it's just to tell people, whoever's a prisoner, whoever felt like a prisoner, like you don't gotta just become the animal that they trying to make you become because that's what they labeled you. So it's not, I mean, in the beginning, it was me telling my son, like, the misleading things when you think about money, when people always run around money, power, respect, or all that stuff. It's like, respect is respect all the way around the board. Loyalty is loyalty all around the board. Don't have a color, 
don't have an age, don't have a race. It's just some some things to me is like unwritten rules. And there's some unwritten rules that people try to justify why they break them. But if we all respect each other, would, would crime be crime? If we all uh, was honest to each other, wouldn't that change something? Like there's so many things that people got to go back and do research on. So I just was just sharing like my experiences of racism. Like, I never really can say I, I mean, yeah, you call me a, the N-word. How close are you when you call me the N-word matters? There is freedom of speech. There is ignorance. There is people that's going to say stupid stuff. I'm not, I'm not oblivious to this. I was fortunately to be raised by two men that uh, let me know the world is hard. Like the world is cold. Like you will hear some stuff. So the book was just to tell my son, like, pass on those jewels that I might have lost along the way when I was running the streets that I needed to probably just sit down. Like that might have been the, the, the sign for me to sit down and regroup and remember what I was taught. So I was just passing my son jewels, tough love, like no. And then just making sure he understood my, who his father was from his father not from strangers, not from people who know me from my street name. Not, it was just so many things played into that. Like I was at that point in my life where writing this was to him. It started out like just some type of diary. It was like a diary thing. And then somebody just was like, yo, you could probably make books out of things. And that's when this became a book. But it's always been just a past like when you realize that you you was raised better like all of us we go through struggles and everything but were we raised without respect were you able to just run up on your grandmother and your mother while they was talking and not get yelled at for interrupting adults like this things that maybe it's just me 70s babies 60s i mean but there's a there's things that you just knew you wasn't supposed to do. And these days, I think it's just a little blurred. So it was just making sure that my, my that, at that time, my firstborn just understood that, listen, I'm not the animal. I'm not no monster. This is who your dad is. So you went from prisoner to CEO. So tell us about your companies and everything that you're doing now with your companies? I mean, I got we, me, my partner wise, you can always check them out. Stuck in my mind podcast. Uh, my partner, Brandy J, you could check, check her out. She's everywhere. So I don't even know what podcast to yell, but she does have voices of courage. And uh, we just, the pandemic made this, created this, this, provided us this opportunity it opened up a window where if you could jump in and capitalize then there's a chance and we decided to jump in and we jumped in all the way in i think we jumped in and we already it wasn't even like three months after starting the podcast that we was already talking about real wise productions and it wasn't probably a couple of months after that before real wise productions was just a company llc everything that needed to be taken care of we took care of it with real wise productions and uh that led to real wise radio which you can download on itunes or you could download or whatever, whatever the app stores is on Google Play and and I Apple, you could download the app. We play. Uh, we try to stay back them days. So there's a lot of '90s, there's a lot of '80s, some '70s, jazz, pop, rock, Spanish, hip hop, 
R and B blends, like just just feel good music. Not saying the music today is not feel good music, but just rem- just to remind people like of those days and those who they'll hold those who lived in those days, and you you just get to feel those days again. Like they don't they force all this other music down your throat. We're trying to do it where we can even get people to just send us demos of comedy and we'll play that at a certain time or try to find artists and if they want to get their music heard. Like we're starting, we know the struggle. We're not here to charge nobody nothing right now because we just all build together. It ain't always about getting up front. So, and that's, it's just been crazy ever since the books came because I, the books was always there. And the sad thing is I sent the books to a lot of people that I thought was family or I thought was friends or I thought was supporters. And nobody thought that or cared or even wondered if it was worth trying to even check it out and see if it, we could do something with it. So I wrote the books in 2007, it's now 2021. So there's a lot of things, this is just desire, not giving up. Like there's a lot of things people would give up if somebody uh, didn't believe in their things. So if anything, I just tell people, man, believe in yourself, show and prove, and then you're gonna get supporters. How, what level of support it is, I don't I don't care what people think. I don't care who supports. Life is life. Everything happens for a reason. So when I go hard about this and we go crazy with all these businesses, it's just why not? I spent years running the streets, wasting time, risking my life. <laughs> why wouldn't I? That's my thing. Like, why wouldn't I? I'm not just a a street hustler, it's a hustler. There's a there's there's always some way to make money. And as long as there's some way to make money, I gotta figure it out. And that is the fun for me. So and I do have a paint uh property maintenance company that is fully LLC. I take every dime, I learn how to sacrifice. I don't need clothes, I don't need jewelry, I don't need new cars, I need something that I can leave to the children. I need son, I'm, I really do believe that you could, you got to build, we have to build villages all over again of people that just understand this is just a village and we all take care of each other. There's nothing the government can do. There's nothing nobody can do in my eyes. I believe we have to do it. So I'm going to create businesses. I'm going to try to make this money. I want to buy land. That's our next plan is to get a whole bunch of land build our own little uh, gated communities. And it's not just colored based. It's just good people. That's all I, you want to live around is just good people that don't look at you as you like you're the enemy. So I'm, I, I believe that you just have to build from ground zero. And it's not like destroy what's here now to build like everybody says. It's just this mad land. We invested in mad stuff that don't got nothing to do with land. So we don't leave our kids nothing. So I'm just on a different, I'm on a different path. I hope the book just makes people think about stuff. It's not to tell nobody that my way or my, my life or the way I see things is perfect. It just, maybe what I'm going through and how I handled it and how I maneuver or how I think could help somebody. Well, there's one, whether well, it's more than one, I'm, it's a book. That's all. You don't got to like it. You don't have to. I mean, listen, it's just a book. And it, with, the, with the online thing and the way they give it to you, I think everybody should write a book. Well, you'd be surprised how many people are interested in the life you had, the life she had. So... I'm just taking advantage of all the doors that open instead of just letting them close and then wondering why I didn't go through them. Do you have any upcoming projects that 
people know about need to know about? Right now, plus the plus life from prison to peace is looking like a early a mid fall book release. After that, I have Confessions of a Man and Confessions of a Man Part Two: The Evolution of a Player. And then I do have a manuscript that's not even, that's just completely raw. That's called Blind Love, Loving Without Knowing. And that's me meeting a woman while in prison that I never knew on the street. Going home, coming home from prison and moving in with this woman. And dedicating myself to this woman or for the loyalty of just messing with somebody that she never met in prison. And then I'm single right now. So it's just a book to let people know, like blind love, loving without knowing. It's it's one of those experiences where nothing is ever carved in stone. So you could love somebody and then there might be some time when that love is gone and you just got to learn how to accept that the love is gone. Well, give out some contact information, let people know how they can connect with you, keep up with everything that you're doing, and how they can purchase your books. Okay, uh, the book will be on Kindle, access to everybody. I would definitely be making sure that Curtis gets a, a update on the release. Also, you can follow us on at Real Wise TV on YouTube. You can follow us on our Patreon page, Real Wise uh, Productions. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Poppy underscore J73. You can find me on Twitter, Poppy underscore Lady. And that's it. I don't really do Facebook no more. I'm, t- I'm learning to uh, disconnect from some of this stuff that caused people to go crazy. So if it is, I'm using the, I'm starting to learn that if you don't use the internet the right way, it could hurt you the wrong way. You got any final thoughts before we close it out? What I'm going to always say for all the creators, for anybody that has a vision, that anybody that has a desire, do not let your surroundings dictate you pursuing what is your calling because a desire is something that's burning inside of you so that means it's something that's calling you don't allow the noise outside to stop you man i got i could this book will tell you man there's i have mad excuses there's been mad excuses for reasons for me to just say, you know what? My mom's was an addict. I don't have to do right. This is a good excuse. There's like so many excuses like that. Don't allow the outside and outside noise to stop you from being or pursuing your potential. Don't give up on yourself. Invest in yourself. If that means sacrifice looking good, if that means sacrifice wearing the newest stuff, then do it because if you don't then you ain't really want it like this people gotta understand sacrifice and i'm telling you it's worth it i ain't even sell a book yet and i know it's worth it my team the people the contacts the new people i have in my corner like you build people ah man it's crazy it's crazy it's not as hard as you as they say it is it's not as hard man when you just come and authentic so be yourself believe in yourself and the when the the opportunities the doors is open ladies and gentlemen anthony gonzalez please be sure to follow rate review share this episode after listening android listeners go to the google play store and download the living the dream with curveball podcast app the doors is open
Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Gonzalez, please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode after listening. Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.